We actually had a similar triangles question earlier in this section. It was very easy. We just had to line up the angles and kind of move them from one triangle to the other. Here, it's actually the same exact thing. The only difference here is that we added trigonometry into the mix and they didn't give us the picture. So on our scrap paper, we should draw the picture. So I'm going to just draw um, one triangle, not two, and you'll see why. Um, and uh, we want to make sure we label things. So they're saying RS is 20, ST is 48, TR is 52. It's a right triangle. And just by definition, that means that uh, 52 has to be the big side because um, it's the, the biggest side is always the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So the right angle is here. So now we just want to label things. And it, it, you should try to do it so it's drawn to scale, but you don't have to. Um, you can kind of solve it either way. So I'm going to put R up here and T down here because they say TR is 52. And then RS is my shortest side. So that means S has got to be my right angle. So the 20 can go here. And then ST would be 48. And, and that kind of makes sense. So there's my shape. Um, but we're not talking about triangle RST, right? We're talking about triangle UVW. So we need to kind of understand how that's going to work too. Now, because they're similar triangles, they kind of overlap. And the side lengths may be different. We never actually get the side lengths of U of VW, but it doesn't matter because whether it's just uh, trigonometry or just kind of general, you know, triangles that we're talking about, if we know that they're similar, the sides are going to be in proportion. And since trigonometry is all about proportions, the, the answer will be the same even if the side lengths differ. If that makes no sense, you don't worry about it. You just got to trust the process here and be like, okay, how do U, V, and W line up with R, S, and T? And they tell us. S corresponds to V. So let's put a V here. Uh, T corresponds to W. Let's put a W here. And then that leaves, I guess, um, U has to be up with R. So there you go. Now focus on what they want. They want the tangent of W. And we can say, okay, so Katoa. Hopefully we have that memorized. And tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So the tan of W, the opposite of W is going to be this 20. And then the adjacent is going to be the one that's next to it, but not the hypotenuse, right? Hypotenuse here is going to be 52. No matter what, that has to be the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. So uh, the bottom here, the denominator is 48. So 20 over 48 is my answer. Now that's not an answer, but that's okay because we can reduce it, right? So uh, we can just maybe do this in our heads. Uh, 2 goes into uh, 20, so that's 10 and 24 divided by 2 again. That's 5 and 12. And that is choice B. And now we have an answer. So it's a little bit more complex than the similar triangles question we had earlier. Um, but it's using the exact same rule. Is that if we have two triangles that are similar, they might be different sizes. But the proportions, the relationships between those sides are going to be the same. Which allows the trigonometry to kind of match up. And the angles are the same. So we can, in, that, in this case, just kind of match up the points with the the from one triangle with the points from the other so that we know which sides uh, correspond. Correspond is the word, match up. Um, hopefully, if you understand similar triangles, it won't matter whether it's this complex or something like the easier one before. You'll instantly know what to do and kind of start lining up the pieces of the triangles so that you can move between them very easily.